In this demonstration, we will use Tinkercad's circuit simulator to simulate an Arduino board with two inputs and two outputs. You should already have a free account with Tinkercad. Make sure you're logged in. Go to the home page here and click Circuits. Any previous circuits you've made will appear. Click Create New Circuit. You will be presented with the blank workspace and an automatically allocated name for the project, which you can change later, and the components list. Now I've made a list of components up earlier that we'll need for this, starting with an Arduino Uno microcontroller board. We'll need a breadboard. We'll need a resistor. I'll change its value in a minute. We need an LED. We need a potentiometer, which is a variable resistor with a dial on the front. We'll need a slide switch, a micro servo, which I'll find in the all components and further down. There it is. We'll take this one. And a TMP36, which I can type in here and locate that easily rather than looking through the list. Okay, I can close the components window. Now if I click the resistor, change that from kilo ohms to 220 ohms. And if I move the board down, down here, and I have some space to work on it. We'll start by bringing the potentiometer across. Now I'm just going to spin that around so that it fits in more easily and place the temperature sensor over here. These are going to be our two sensors that we'll use as inputs to the Arduino. This switch will be used as a third sensor which will select between the two inputs when it's being read. The outputs will be an LED and the servo motor. This will move in response to variations in the inputs. The resistor is 220 ohm which will be used in series with the LED to limit the current. I'll just put that into place for the moment and connect that up later. To start with, if we take 5 volts to the supply rail, then we have 5 volts available across this entire row to use elsewhere in the circuit. And the same goes for the ground. We'll need to take 5 volts from the rail to the potentiometer. We'll need the ground connected to the other terminal, and the middle terminal is the wiper, which is going to be the pin that we read from, because as it varies, it will vary the voltage coming out of the wiper pin as we move the dial on the potentiometer. Now, the TMP36 has a supply voltage and a ground pin, so we'll just connect those up. And being the other analog input, we'll connect that to A1. Now the switch will be selecting between them. It will need the ground connected to one side of the switch, 5 volts connected to the other, and the middle pin is common, so it switches between 5 volts and 0 volts. And if I run this out, zoom out a little bit, we can just run over the top of the board and we'll make that digital input number 12. So those are our inputs. Now we just need to connect the outputs from pin 11. We'll run across to the signal wire of the servo motor. And I'm doing these in the 
opposite order to what they should be, but pin 10. We'll run to the other output, which is the LED. So that's connected to the anode of the LED. The cathode connects through to ground via this 220 ohm resistor, which limits the current so that it doesn't burn out the LED. Now we need some supply to the actual servo. So we'll give it 5 volts here and connect the other pin to ground like so. So we have a lot of green wires. I will just color code them so that the reds represent 5 volts and the blacks represent ground. I make all inputs represented by an orange and all outputs represented by blue. Okay, we've got the entire circuit connected and now we just need the code to be uploaded into the Arduino's microcontroller. So first we need to put the code into place using visual block programming. This is a sample to use but we will not use it. We'll put it in the rubbish bin and start by looking at our inputs. We have the potentiometer connecting to A0, so we want to read analog pin A0. We have the temperature sensor connected to A1, so we also want to read A1. We'll drop that down, A1. We want to store those readings as a variable. We'll call it reading. And set reading to read analog A0, set reading to read analog A1. Now as each of these inputs are read, they will have a different reading to what we want to actually send to the LED and the servo because they operate on different ranges. So I've calculated some signal conditioning values that will help that, which I'll put in place. So for the servo, the reading that comes from the input, when the input is the potentiometer, needs to be multiplied by 0 0.25 and when it comes from the LED it needs to be multiplied by 0 0.18 to represent the LED's range of values. We'll need to output that to the LED using this. LED is on pin 10 and I'll just readjust. We'll set that first. So we're setting pin 10 to whatever the reading is multiplied by 0 0.18. The servo has some special coding to control the servo. So we need this block, rotate servo, on pin 11. And the value will be the reading multiplied by 0 0.25. We need to do the same with the other input, which is the temperature sensor, except there'll be different values to multiply to convert the range from the input to the output. So we'll do these ones first this time. Set pin and rotate servo. Set pin 10. Rotate servo on pin 11. That's the wrong wrong one. That's the digital output. We need the analog output. And we'll need to use some maths to calculate it. In this case, we need to, for the potentiometer, multiply by 0.75 
and we are multiplying the reading by 0 0.75 but then we will subtract 15.09 now to save us pulling all the blocks out again and setting them up we can just duplicate and put that one into place there and put this one where it should be now these should be different if I just move that across for the servo it will be multiplied by 0 0.53 and minus 10.65 so those are our two blocks of code for the two different inputs but the next thing we need to do is read the switch which if you remember it's connected to pin 12 so that's an input we need to read it as a digital pin now if I just move this to give us a bit more workspace area we need to read digital pin 12 and if if it's equal to 0 We want, if you remember, if it's zero, which is connected to the ground, then the switch is on the left, which means we want this input. If it's one, which is connected to five volts, it will see as a one, then we want to read from the temperature sensor. Therefore, if we read digital pin 12 and it's equal to a zero then we want this code which correlates to the potentiometer now we don't need to check the pin again we can just say if it was not zero then it must be one which means we go to this block of code so that is the programming we need in place which as you can see as it was being built is represented here in the actual wiring code which will be uploaded to the Arduino and all we need to do is upload and run or we can choose to click start simulation they do the same thing in this case successfully compiled that's always a good sign we can remove the code editor now and centralize the circuit so because it's on the left, it's reading from the potentiometer at the moment as its input, that is sensing the value of the potentiometer. And you can see as I turn the dial, it's being represented by the movement of the servo and also by the brightness of the LED. I'm at full adjustment on the potentiometer and we're at full brightness on the LED and full rotation of the servo. I can move that back around to zero and there can be a delay in the servo as it physically moves into place as would be the case with a real servo if this wasn't a simulator so we can now switch this across to the other input it goes back to a different value now this is a temperature sensor and being a simulated temperature sensor we can't actually change the heat that it's experiencing so if you click on it you can simulate heat or cold it's in the middle now if we make it the extreme range of its coldness that turns the light off and runs this back to the start as the temperature increases the dial turns and the LED increases in brightness to represent And if we switch back to this dial, we can manually adjust it. So this was just a demonstration of making the Arduino sense the readings from two sensors, the potentiometer and the TMP36 temperature sensor and do some calculations and then write to the outputs where we have actuators including the servo and the LED.
you can imagine that other sensors and actuators can be put in place in exactly the same way with all the necessary calculations and this can be a very good use of the Arduino microcontroller board to perform useful operations in the real world.